Hello, my name is Dr. Steven Snyder. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the Southern California Orthopedic Institute, or what we call SCOE, in Van Nuys, which is located just to the north side of Los Angeles, California. Since the beginning of my orthopedic career, I've been especially interested in shoulder joint and uh, was one of the few surgeons in to use an arthroscope to evaluate the shoulder anatomy as early as 1982. I've specialized exclusively in arthroscopic procedures of the shoulder for the last 15 years, and, in, and my main area of focus has been the treatment of pathology of the rotator cuff. In this video introduction, I will be discussing some of the highlights of the SCOE method for arthroscopic rotator cuff repair and reconstruction that we've developed over the last 30 plus years and used successfully in well over 4,000 patients here at SCOE. The rotator cuff is a well-known term for patients, but it often uh, is actually poorly understood. A useful explanation of the rotator cuff is that it is a grouping of four flat tendons that are each connected to muscles that are located on the scapula or wing bone in the back of the shoulder. Uh, the four tendons join together to form one tendon uh, that surrounds the ball of the shoulder socket and attached to the humerus. As the name implies, the combined tendon is similar to that of a cuff, uh, a cuff like on the edge of a shirt or a jacket, and uh, completely surrounds uh, the joint. Since there are four muscles attached to the rotator cuff tendon, each one is responsible for a different rotation of the arm but also since they are combined, they must work together to create a balanced motion of the shoulder. A rotator cuff can be torn generally in three different ways. The first is repetitive overhead activity, such as working with the arm above the shoulder level, uh, things such as carpentry, sports such as throwing and swimming, or exercises such as weightlifting. This is especially risky if the shoulder has previous episodes of bursitis or tendonitis, causing the rotator cuff to be swollen or inflamed. Often in patients with these problems, there will be a spur that develops under the acromial bone, and that spur can rub or pinch the rotator cuff, causing what we call impingement, and eventually uh, wearing down the cuff and causing a tear. The second way a rotator cuff can be torn is following an acute traumatic event such as a fall on the shoulder or on the outstretched arm. Motor vehicle accident or some other type of uh, work trauma can cause this injury. This type of injury actually is more dramatic and often results in much larger uh, or severely disabling rotator cuff tears. The third and most common uh, way that a rotator cuff is torn is what we call an acute on chronic tear. As we all mature in life, our tissues naturally tend to become a little weaker. The blood supply to the end of the rotator cuff tendon uh, attachment is not very robust, and when small injuries occur, it may not be adequate to promote healing. It then only takes a small injury, like a, lifting a suitcase or a quick jerky motion to cause the tear uh, to be complete. These tears, of course, are sometimes more difficult to repair uh, because they are degenerative, but fortunately also uh, may not be as painful and disabling since they occur over time, allowing the other muscles of the shoulder to substitute for the lost cuff function. The most common symptoms that we see is pain, and it's usually centered over the um, lateral side of the upper or outer arm uh, or the deltoid muscle. The pain is frequently worse at nighttime and often disturbs the sleep. Rotator cuff pain never radiates below the elbow and can often be confused with a pinched nerve in the neck that can also cause shoulder pain but often radiates down below the elbow to the hand. Other common symptoms that we see with rotator cuff disease uh, are weakness with lifting, pushing, pulling, and overhead work. Even if a uh, cuff tear has been slowly progressing, there may be reasonably good shoulder motion, but weakness when attempting to lift. When an individual presents in the office with shoulder pain, a detailed history and physical examination is performed. X-rays are performed to evaluate for arthritis and bone spurs. 
If there is a strong suspicion of a rotator cuff tear, often an MRI is needed to evaluate the extent of the damage and determine the best course of treatment. If the rotator cuff is simply irritated with bursitis or tendonitis, then treatment with anti-inflammatory medications and possibly even a cortisone uh, injection may be helpful. Physical therapy will also be helpful. If there is an actual tear in the rotator cuff tendon, especially if the muscles are beginning to shrink, scar, or atrophy, and there is an unacceptable disability with pain and weakness, then a surgical repair should be considered. I've been doing all of my rotator cuff repairs completely arthroscopically for the last 25 years, and I believe uh, I was one of the first surgeons in California, and perhaps the United States, to do so. I strongly believe that in always performing the best possible cuff repair using the strongest and safest tools while minimizing the surgical damage to the surrounding normal tissues. Arthroscopy allows me to do just that. All of my surgery is performed in the same day or outpatient basis at uh, SCO COSI, our outpatient surgery center on the fourth floor of our SCOE office. All patients are given a general anesthesia. A small telescope such as this one is inserted uh, into the shoulder joint and uh, through the telescope we fill the shoulder with water. Three uh, one-quarter inch incisions are made around the shoulder joint and uh, three soft rubber cannulas are inserted into the joint. Uh, through these cannulas our surgical tools can be inserted so that we don't damage the soft tissues around the shoulder, including the muscles and skin, while we do our repairs. The first part of the operation is to carefully evaluate the anatomy of the entire shoulder joint. Sometimes there are other areas injured that will also require care, such as the biceps tendon or the joint cartilage. Next, a motorized shaver with suction attached is used to remove torn and non-viable tissues and smooth any rough bony structures. When we smooth the acromial bone, we call this a decompression. Finally, the rotator cuff tendon is reattached to bone using small titanium metal anchors. Each anchor is loaded with three sutures and strong non-absorbable non material. This is an example of a, uh, what we call a, a Trevo anchor, a small titanium screw with three sutures uh, attached that choose to uh, insert uh, directly into the area where we want to reattach the tendon to bone. When uh, the sutures are in place, they're passed through the tendon and all the sutures are, are tied together, tightly fixing the bone back to the uh, area where we want it to reattach. A final and very important part of the operation is to punch five or six small holes just uh, near the repair site. Uh, the rotator cuff is repaired to the uh, what we call the tuberosity of the bone and the, and the bone marrow vents are punched just uh, lateral or outside from that. These bone marrow vents allow the important uh, bone marrow to flow out of the uh, cancellous bone and cover the rotator cuff repair site bringing the blood supply the stem cells, the growth factors, and the platelets uh, to cover the rotator cuff repair site and give all of the materials necessary to uh, heal the rotator cuff. Uh, we call this a crimson duvet. Even though it seems that we are now able to readily repair most problems, there's still those cases where the tendon is just too degenerated that it cannot be repaired with the usual methods. For these cases, we have developed a method for patching the defective cuff using a type of human allograft tissue which is processed in a special tissue lab. This is not a commonly needed procedure, but when it is the only resort, it has been a valuable addition to our surgical skills. After surgery, a patient wears a specially designed ultrasling. This brace is a very important since it protects the healing rotator cuff from excess tension by supporting the weight of the arm in the best position for healing. That is a little bit away from the body and a little bit in external rotation. The arm can come out of the ultra sling when the patient is sitting, working on a computer, eating, reading, watching television, but the sling should be used 
it, for any other activities of the shoulder uh, where he or she might accidentally move the arm, such as shopping or sleeping. It may often be difficult to find a comfortable position to sleep when using an ultrasling after surgery. We recommend using a reclining chair or a wedge pillow on the bed with a pillow below the knees for support. It is, if it's more comfortable to sleep flat in bed, that's just fine. Whatever's comfortable is fine. We always give patients pain medications to use after surgery. Seldom is the pain severe, and most patients are comfortable using Motrin or Tylenol and, uh, of course, ice after a few days. I am happy to have had the opportunity to start my shoulder practice when arthroscopy was just being introduced as a tool for surgery of the knee, and I was able to adapt it to the shoulder. I continue to be amazed by the marvelous techniques that we have developed to repair even severely damaged rotator cuff tendons and expect that in the future even more and better methods will evolve. I've also been fortunate to have the opportunity to work with many of the arthroscopic equipment companies and brace companies to invent and design many of the tools used today to perform these surgical repairs gives me great pride and satisfaction to be a part of the team that has eliminated the need to ever cut into a shoulder to fix a rotator cuff tear. I hope this brief discussion about the rotator cuff has been helpful to you. If you would like any more information, please see our SCOE website or call us in the office for an appointment. We have several short video examples of arthroscopic rotator cuff repairs on the website that will clarify the steps of the operations even more. As you can tell, we have a passion for the shoulder and will do our very, very best to help you make the best decision to get your shoulder functioning again. To learn more about arthroscopic rotator cuff repair and reconstruction, please visit our website at www.scoe.com and thank you for watching my video.